Hello, everybody. This is Andre of Zebra BI. Hope everybody can hear me. Uh, we are running a little bit. We are starting a little bit, uh, a little bit late, but hopefully everybody is uh, in the waiting room already and seeing my uh, seeing my my screen here. Um, let me just check whether everything is okay. All right. Hopefully everything is is okay. And uh, yeah, let me let me start. So uh, my my name is Andre of Zebra BI, and today I'll present uh, our top five tricks for uh, effective Power BI dashboards. Uh, namely, um, we have done a lot of a lot of dashboards. Um, everything from from you know big big Power BI projects. Um, down to simple, you know, just helping people uh, start with with Power BI, and uh, I have learned that um, you know many people um, <clears throat> have some, um, you know, pe people do lots of lots of things in in, in Power BI, and uh, I would today I'd just like to you know share a few best practices, especially in terms uh, uh, of of modeling. So. Um, I'm the founder of, of, of Zebra BI, and uh, actually my main topic of, of research and you know uh, like the core of my work is actually data visualization. So the Zebra BI, uh, Zebra BI develops custom visuals, advanced custom visuals for Power BI, and um, yeah. Uh, but on top of that, we are also helping our our users a little bit from from time to time, and uh, yeah. Uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to share a few, um, you know, best practices, a few tricks from from our own experience um, that will help you build uh, your dashboards uh, much faster. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, that will reduce the maintenance uh, times and 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 the complexity of, of your Power BI uh, dashboards. Um, hopefully in a, in a in a huge way. So let me just um, show you a few things um, that I will build today, uh, just to explain you know what my goal is for today. So I have a dashboard here. Um, uh, basically, it's it's a report. Um, in Power BI, and uh, as you see, I have some, uh, you know, I have some charts and tables and and so on. So, so I basically just have two visuals here. So this is one visual, and this is the other visual, right? But um, what I can do now is I can uh, switch. Uh, uh, I can I can do things like, of course, you can switch your, you know, your periods here, um, and 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 so on. But more importantly, what I can do is I can just reuse the same two visuals without any bookmarks, without any you know, uh, uh, without any messy hidden visuals and and things like that. I can simply use slicers. Um, you know, default Power BI slicers to switch, you know, from monthly to year to date view, which is, I would say, one of the, you know, basic requirements for, for a business dashboard, right? You want to see your results, uh, for example, here for the revenue for your current month, or, or, you know, just switch to year to date to, to see, you know, how are we, uh, this is now a comparison to, to comparison to previous year, for example. So, so I see my, Sales here, actually, my revenue here compared to my um, compared to my previous year, and I can switch from month. So I see, you know, the the, the result here for the December, um, which is of course um, it looks like 33 percent here. Um, and if I switch to year to date, I see the final year results. So the full year results, year to date. And it's 15.7% uh, compared to to uh, to my previous year. Not only that, I can simply switch uh, uh, the the whole page in my in my on my dashboard, uh, you know, to uh, see the results for costs or gross profit or basically any KPI, right? So the the idea here is, you know, uh, to build. Uh, to build this navigation in such a way that uh, you don't have to uh, use 
too many visuals. You don't have to hide them or, you know, bookmark them and, and do those strange <laughs> uh, Power BI tricks that people are, uh, are doing. Um, okay, so that's the goal for today. Once you have this in place, you can simply, you know, reuse the same, you know, reuse this, this navigation and just build um, build different views like here, you know, you can have a simple view like, like this to, you know, switch between business units and uh, see the results, see the detailed results, you know, in another mm -hmm. visual. But again, the same, like the same navigation here would work, um, you know, for all, all the pages, right? Or you can just uh, have a detailed, um, you know, detailed report for the business units. And again, you can just observe like any, any kind of KPI, see the results for your month or for your year to date in many, many different views, right? So once you have this in place, the idea is you set this up and then you can simply just copy the pages, you know, copy the pages and change a little bit the, uh, uh, the, the content inside your visuals, but you don't actually work with, you know, hundreds of measures that you, that you have to, um, you know, separately put on your dashboards uh, and so on. All right, hope this makes sense. Uh, hope this, uh, you know, sounds sounds interesting. So let's do this. Let's do this right now. Um, like every, I'll just start with a completely blank, um, completely, completely blank Power BI, uh, Power BI page, Power BI file, and we'll build everything from scratch, all right? So let's get some data here. So I have some demo data here um, in Excel actually. So let's just connect to my Excel file. All right, and uh, I have a sales table. So this is a like kind of a sales dashboard. Uh, I have some dates here, and then I have my information. I have my products, customers, salespersons. I have some business units, you know, so several dimensions. And then I have three KPIs. So I have the uh, revenue here. I have the costs. I have the gross profit. And additionally, here at the end, I also have um, a column called scenario where uh, which basically determines what is the type of data because my the same uh, this this fact table here um, has the data for you know has the actual data as well as a plan data right so it's all together joined in this fact uh, table already so this is my sales uh, fact table and then I have my dimensions so I have some salespersons. I have lots of products, you know, uh, in a hierarchy of product groups and so on. I have some customers, you know, by region, country and so on. And business units, so I have some business units uh, organized into groups and divisions and so on. So let's just load everything into my Power BI model, um, which should take a few seconds coming up. And then we'll uh, just take a look quickly at my relationships here. So you see uh, the Power BI basically connected already, uh, detected uh, some relationships here. This is because of course I'm using, you know, the, the same um, foreign keys. So uh, this is a country ID, uh, sorry, customer ID here, customer ID. So Power BI will detect this already. So I already have a simple star schema here and let's just, um see what you can do you know with a simple star schema here like this uh let's take some um let's take some revenue Let, let's start with the revenue and let's split this down by time now i at the moment i don't have my time dimension right so uh what you'll end up with if you don't do anything you'll probably just get uh, you know your dates and power bi will um 
just build an automatic date hierarchy here. So you can just start with some simple analysis, like, all right, how does my sales, my revenue, um, you know, uh, develop over time, over years, and then you can uh, just, uh, yeah, drill down a little bit. So these are my quarters, and then drill down, and you know, this would be your typical like time series analysis. Uh, in Power BI, just one chart. And now let's stop for a second and just start thinking about, all right, what do I actually want to show? What, what do I actually want to build? Because the uh, time series like this, I mean, we can see that it's somehow, you know, it's growing a little bit. So we see that at the end here, we have some kind of growth, right? But we don't actually know what exactly uh you know how much is this growth right we we can't we, we don't have any any kind of analysis set up right um so that's why um we will build uh we'll first build a measure for the previous year and uh we'll start by that and of course before you um before you you start building any time of uh, uh, any kind of time intelligence in Power BI, you need to load your uh, time or calendar uh, dimension into your model. So that's you know just the bare necessities of Power BI. You need your time. Um, you need your uh, calendar calendar dimension, right? So. Um, the recommendation actually is to build the, the time dimension, the calendar dimension in Power Query. Uh, but since the, my today's session is a DAX session, so we'll just uh, we'll just do it in uh, we'll just do it in uh, uh, in DAX just quickly. Um, I believe most of you uh, have the the time dimension, but if you don't have a time dimension, if you're just using you know the, your default dates here, then you know uh, just uh, this will be my my first advice. Like like you should have absolutely no models in Power BI without a separate separate uh, calendar dimension, basically. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just quickly switch to um, let's just go here and we'll add a new table. Uh, we'll call it a calendar. Uh, we'll call it a calendar and just quickly a uh, few few options here so the basic dax formula for that is the calendar formula and here you can basically um you have several options like the most simple one is just uh, you know hard codes just type in uh the exact dates that you want to um your calendar table to cover so for example my data is from from 2016 to 2008 I think so I'll just do it like something like this like the end end of 2018 and I get a column I get a date column with all the dates from 16 to, to 18 right which is kind of the the, the basic thing here uh, instead of uh, of course having uh, you know hard-coded dates here you can use uh, uh, you know, you can use uh, things like uh, first date, end date, mean max, and, and so on. Uh, but just to, uh, if you want to simplify the things uh, very much, uh, then you can use the uh, calendar auto function, right? Uh, this calendar auto function uh, has an additional optional um, parameter uh, if your um, fiscal years, um, um, if you have different fiscal years, so not from January to, to December, but from like um, from April or something, you can you can just start. Uh, you can add the optional parameter here um, yeah, for the start of the fiscal year. In my case, I'll just have a simple, you know, calendar auto. So like like in 80% of, of, of cases uh, or 90% of cases, you know, this is a simple function that will just uh, work. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you need to do it with uh, um, yeah, the, the min max functions or something like that uh, to control uh, exactly which dates from which tables, um, you know, affect your calendar. But just to, you know, start with simple things here, uh, you have your dates and now you can just start adding columns to your, um, you know, start, start building your, your calendar dimension with obvious 
things like uh, first one, I guess, would be the month, month number, right? Um, you can use the uh, month function here. Let me enlarge this. So, um, so just the month function. Oh, sorry, not this one. And you just simply refer to your calendar date, and sorry. I was too quick. So calendar date, right? Which returns the uh, month number, right? Uh, in addition to that, of course, you need the actual label of, of month. So you know, just do the, I'll call this the month. And now we'll uh, just extract the uh, month. Uh, we'll format the month. So we'll basically We'll refer to the date and format this as month. I recommend just to use short three letters for month uh, because this works nicely in you know all the charts and uh, it's short and 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 sweet. So um, yeah, we'll do this. Um, we will uh, now we'll just sort this column, the month column by month number right which is uh again one bad necessity in power bi so just to make sure you know you have a custom sort of month uh so that you have the actual um month order in your model right so um that's it let's just build uh, another one um like the quarter All right again the quarter uh, we'll use the format function and we'll just format our date as a Q, as a quarter, which returns the uh, number of the quarter. Um, if you need to format this like Q1, Q2, and so on, then you can... Uh, just concatenate uh, i can use the letter q and then just concatenate this with uh you know the number of the quarter like the shortest way of doing that is without the concatenation you can actually type the q here and escape it with the backslash calendar uh character so this means that this part of the expression is the actual letter Q and then followed by the number of the quarter, which again, uh, you know, returns the same result here. All right, but just building, um, building. Um, I guess most of you know how to build a, a, the calendar uh, function here. So let me just uh, show you now the, the latest and just uh, the, the, the simplest, way how to how to do this in DAX. So I'll just delete everything that I've done and I'll show you an alternative way. So I'll just delete my calendar. And now we'll uh, just refer to my... So this is the PBIX file that I'll share. Uh, I have already shared, so so you can uh, download this. Uh, here, the last, uh, the last page here contains all of the DAX that I'll use today. And here, I have um, like a fully automatic calendar. So I'm using the calendar auto function, but um, I'm using actual the, uh, actually the expression, the, the formula add columns, which allows you to add multiple columns in just one, one, ex, one DAX expression. So basically it adds the calendar auto and then does all the formatting, you know, all the stuff that I just manually tried to build a minute ago. So I'll just copy everything, um, go back here and I'll just click new table and paste everything inside. All right, let's just leave the empty rows. This is, the empty rows come from uh, the uh, text box in Power BI, so it's, uh... all right, we enter this, and this is, voila, my whole calendar index. All right, so that's the, you know, the, the, most, you know, the fastest way, the, the, the laziest way in Power BI how to just simply add, uh, build a calendar, calendar dimension, right? So, um, so far, um, we have added my, the calendar here. So from now on, we will not use, uh, you know, the date 
the date field anymore. So the most uh, the, the most correct way here would be just to go here and quickly hide this from your report view, right? So you don't um, mix up all the you know the, the dates. And from now on, we'll we'll do it here, and we can just simply use now the. Uh, the dates, uh, as you see here, uh, we have uh, we have a few problems. So first of all, I've added my calendar um, table here, but I did not link it to my fact table. So let's just uh, enlarge this a little bit and make a relationship. So here the date goes to date. Now this should be better. And we'll sort this by month and by and ascending all right whoops it's not uh, so let's just check month my month field here should be sorted by month number i thought i did this but obviously i didn't all right this is my the same this is now my my monthly chart here now i can use my year because one of the columns in my calendar table was a year, just so just separate column for a year. So you can simply build, um, I just simply use this as a filter, as a slicer here. So we have a 2008, right? Now what I want to do is, now I want to compare my month to the previous year. So I will start building my measures here. All right, first of all, um, First of all, you should uh, build your base measures in in, in DAX, uh, which means that first of all, I will uh, add a measure for my revenue. Let's enlarge this. All right, so this will be my revenue, and um, I actually recommend that you know you never, never, ever. Uh, Put the measures, your you know, um, your columns, measure columns directly to uh, to the visuals, like we did just you know before with this visual. But you actually hide those visuals and just use um, and always use uh, uh, measures um, in DAX, right? Even if it's you know the same measure, like. Um, even if it's the same revenue, you know, just just do a just do a simple like sum of the uh, sum of the revenue, sum of the sales revenue column, right? Just do it like this. Uh, sorry, uh, my measure here is already here. I'll call this. Let's give it a different name. I'll call this the revenue AC filtered. And I'll explain why in, in, in the next minute, all right? So instead of using the, the revenue here, just, um, you know, use, instead of that, use the measure, all right? Uh, why is this, um, uh, th this will make your uh, dashboards in Power BI, your models in Power BI more robust because if you rename, um, you know, um, if you rename your columns for, you know, for for any reason, uh, or you do some some you know uh, some changes in in Power Query or you know on your on your source data, uh, you will just go go here and you'll be able to fix your base measures, and then everything else uh, will be uh, derived from those base measures. So you have you know a single point where you can uh, just fix. Uh, the measures everywhere. If you don't do this and you uh, just use your base columns in your visuals, then you know after some time you will have like 30 pages in in your reports with lots of visuals, and you will have your direct columns inside, um, you know, inside the the visuals. And uh, if something changes, uh, you'll have problems. You'll see those uh, angry yellow uh, triangles uh, everywhere. You know that your measures are not not valid and so on. So, so this would be the basic, just just some. But uh, in my case, uh, I do have uh, in my case I do have in my sales table here. Uh, let's just uh, check this. All right, my sales table has this uh, scenario column with, uh, you know, um, the type of, of data, actual or plan or forecast and so on. So what I need to do now is uh, just here filter out uh, 
the data for the actual. So we'll start calculating here. So we'll calculate the sales revenue and we'll just filter, we'll just filter my uh, sales table, right? And I will say the scenario column should match the uh, AC. All right. All right. So this is now actually my uh, my actual sales revenue. All right. So this is now my basic measure. Uh, it has the revenue for actual sales. Uh, we can do the same for um, for the budget. Okay. Let's do it. Just copy this, and we'll just uh, add another measure. And I'll just paste this. So this will be my plan or budget. And just change the condition here. Just filter the rows uh, where the scenario matches the PL or plan or something like that. So I have my base measures here. Now that I have this, I can build my previous year measure. All right. So let's quickly do this. Another measure. And now we can calculate, finally, the revenue for the previous year, which will uh, simply, um, let's do a calculate. Let's calculate. Um, we'll take the actual, uh, the actual revenue. So revenue, actual filtered, you see, I'm building this from my measure already not from my not from my you know original columns so everything will be based on on the on my base measures from 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 now on and we'll just uh, yeah let's just need to calculate the previous year there are like five ways how you do this index i tend to use uh, the dates um um actually the date add function um where you just take your dates from your calendar dimension of course and now you uh, the date add is I, I like the date add because it's just so versatile for example i can just say here minus one and um and select the year voila which means that you know it'll just roll the year back for for minus one so that's the previous year right so you have um you have different you have other formulas like uh, the um, um, apparel periods uh, same period last year and and so on uh, but this one is uh, kind of if you just want to uh, learn one one of them uh, just use the date add uh, and then you can do that like you know previous year uh, by referring to to year or previous month and then you just change here from from year to month and and then the quarter and and so on so it's very versatile you can do you know one year back two year back and so on so you can basically um, build many measures uh, by simply changing the, the parameters here. All right, this is my revenue year to date. So let's add this to my visual. And this will be your typical, yeah, your typical, um, like, uh, you know, sales versus previous year chart in Power BI that, that uh, I see a lot with uh, all the users. Of course, you can switch to different years. This is like the basics now. Um, now I'll bring in uh, now I'll bring in the Zebra BI visuals um, just to display this in a in a better way. Um, so just bring in two custom visuals uh, in order to display this information in a much, much better way. Uh, so we'll just switch from uh, the, the, the default visual to the Zebra BI power charts visual for this one. And all right, this is this looks a little bit more complex, but it's you know it makes more sense because now i see now this visual uh, allows me you know to see the growth like from the previous year let me enlarge this all right so now i see all right last year we had 8.1 million and this year we have 8.8 .8 million which is uh, like 8.2 percent growth right if you just 
focus on on this on this part here which is 8.2 percent growth and you do click you can just see this all right this is now uh six thousand euros and something or you can have both and and so on right you can just switch um get get much better but much much better a much more focused visualization here or you can just uh see this uh you know with a you know in a column chart uh with the variance already inside and so on so as long as you have your you know your ac measure and then your revenue previous year you can already you know you can already display this information in much more meaningful way like in you know like in monthly charts so let's do it like this and now uh you can do the same um you can do the same so you can already use something like um uh so based on these two measures like actual versus previous uh, year and you can split this by you know your business units and um and so on so you see it's this is already making sense and all i did is just introduce the previous year measure here um so uh i have a split of all of my business units and uh, let's make this bigger all right this is already better so you know this is already kind of uh, functioning like a basic basic um maybe basic dashboard where you can click on a business uh, click sorry click on a business unit see the results for this business unit or another business unit or you can sort um uh yeah you can sort the business units to uh just see who are the the ones that are performing you know uh below previous years so or or the growth like the relative growth here you know in percent which business unit is growing the fastest or just have ha has a negative growth right which is not really good here so the skincare well that's bad you see so many months it was just going down and it's kind of still still much below previous previous year here so this is already starting to make sense now but of course in a, a dashboard like this um one of the things that uh you know um would be uh, even better to understand is for example, if we have a monthly comparison like this and, you, and and this is the result, well, this is actually the result for the whole year, right? So I, I haven't actually um, introduced the month. So let's just put in the month here, switch to the slicer and just do a drop down. So we have like a monthly reporting thing here and uh, let's select one month. All right, what happens is, of course, this is now filtering all of my visuals, uh, which is okay for this visual. But of course, if you have a time trend here, then you don't want this visual, uh, this filter to uh, to filter out all the month here. So we'll just, let's just quickly fix this by edit interactions and we'll just disable filtering for the month here. Okay, so now this one just uh, affects the left part but uh all my monthly uh time series are still uh here all right so now let's do the switch for the year to date all right now what most people would do in power bi is they would just add another measure here like add a measure and then do the like revenue uh you know revenue year to date and then you also need revenue for previous year year to date and now we have the plan and then you have the plan year to date right so if you're just adding measures here you will add up uh end up uh with a lot of measures and i've seen that in real life like people have 50 measures or 100 measures that's why actually microsoft uh you know added the search box here so you can actually find things but the problem is you know even it's it's not even uh, all right that you need a few minutes to find your 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 data here the problem is that once you have everything um you know split split into all those measures um you will have the problem because you will have to add and change your measures here for everything right so you will need one visual that will have the revenue um compared to revenue previous year then you'll have another one which will have revenue year to date versus previous year year to date and another one and another one you know so that's the real problem so what i want to do is just simply build a generic 
uh, switch for monthly versus year to date, it will work with all of my measures. All right. And uh, the easiest way to do this uh, in Power BI is uh, to add a disconnected table. All right. So what I'll do here now is I will add a table and call it the uh, period calculation. And this little table here uh, will serve me um, as a switch between different time uh, calculations. Uh, so I'll have, uh, I'll just call this the period calculation here. And I will add an ID, like, a, you know, um, uh, let's call this the calculation ID. Okay, and I simply have to, I need to support like a monthly versus year to date switch. So my first row will be monthly. This will be number one. And then the option number two will be year to date. This is number two, load this into Power BI. And this will stay a disconnected table. So uh, if we now go to my model, which is starty, startly, slowly starts, you know, to grow here. So you'll just put it somewhere around your calendar dimension, right? But it's not connected. It's completely disconnected. We'll just use it as a switch on my dashboard, as a slicer on my dashboard. Namely, now in my model, I have this period calculation here, and I can just simply take the period calculation here. And uh, I'll use it as a slicer. And this time, I'll just um, use it as a horizontal slicer just to get the buttons. So the user can quickly, you know, uh, just switch between monthly year to date, right? So far, nothing is happening because I just have this table. And now, now the trick is, now the trick is, first of all, I need to understand, uh, you know, which one is selected. All right. So that's why we'll go here inside inside my period calculation uh, table, and we'll add a measure that will simply return. Uh, let's call it uh, what, like selected uh, selected calculation. And uh, all right, now what I'll do now is I won't use, uh, you know, like the selected value or something like that. I will use the function, the mean function, and I will simply evaluate the minimum uh, the minimum uh, calculation ID, which is this one. Okay, that's it. So just a simple mean function. And let's see what this measure now returns. Let's put it here, make it a, uh, yeah, like a card just temporarily, just to see if this works. You see, monthly, year to date, monthly, year to date. Uh, the good thing about the min function is that, you know, even if I delete, even if I delete this slicer, so if, even if I don't use this slicer on my page, um, this will evaluate, all right, let's just duplicate this and then just, just to show you, all right. So in this page, I'll just delete this. So you see my default is number one, which is, which means monthly. So even if I don't use this uh, from my model, my default is still okay. So you need to make sure that, you know, your defaults are natural. So if the user does not select anything, he'll just get monthly values like, you know, he would expect. But if you then add um, this slicer here, ah, put it here. All right. This will work. All right. Now this changes, this only changes my measure here. And now what I need to do is now I need to take this measure and now build, build the result of this, of this, uh, simple evaluation expression here, just build it into my measure, right? So what I will do now is um, I will add another measure. Add a new measure. Uh, let's call it the, uh, so this will be what? The revenue. So let's call it revenue actual. And this, this measure, this time, this measure will, you know, um, will know how to switch between those uh, options and guess what's the uh, DAX formula for that. The DAX formula is called the switch. All right. And we'll simply evaluate my selected, 
my selected calculation, all right, will simply evaluate this. And based on this uh, selected calculation, uh, so monthly or year to date, will return. So now I'm shift enter tab to make this a little bit more readable. And if uh, the switch is a one, which is monthly, I simply return the same measure like revenue AC filtered, like the same thing we had before. But if this is, oh, sorry, not the enter, but shift enter. If this is two, I need to return the year to date. All right, so let's just add another calculate uh, formula here and I'll calculate my revenue AC filtered. Um, and I'll just calculate the, the year to date. Uh, the formula for that is dates YTD. Voila. And you simply take the, your date from the date from your calendar table, uh, like this, like this, one more, enter. And now we have this revenue measure. So you see, instead of building another measure, I'm just adding logic to my to, to the same to the same measure here to my to my revenue measure here. That's kind of the the the, the general idea. So instead of uh, instead of using so this one should work, but of course now I need to put it into my visual here. So instead of that one, I'll use this one. And you see now, my measure for the actual already, you know, can switch between monthly and year to date. All right. Um, it's very green here. Why? Because the previous year, the measure for previous year does not refer to my new measure. It's still, you know, fixed for the um, just monthly, monthly view, the default view. So let's just go back and uh, let's fix this. So my revenue previous year measure. I had it, you see, I have it linked to my previous measure. So I'll just change this and just link my previous year calculation to my new revenue AC calculation, which takes into account the year to date switch. And now both of the measures should work like from here to here. You see, click, click. That's it. I need to make sure that I have my all the right measures also here. All right, and this is already this is already nice a nice thing, right? Uh, you can do many 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 things like this. Uh, you can use it uh, as a switch. Um, you can you could do some 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 other tricks as well, but that would be the basic the basic idea. All right, now let's add uh, let's throw in the the, the last um, the last part of of my um i would say basic basic sales dashboard navigation we don't need this card anymore now instead of having um instead of having just you know revenue and, and costs and everything in separate measures uh what i will do is um i will try to add this the last piece of my dex for today which is here again the option to switch between different KPIs. All right, and we'll just use reuse the same idea like we did for the month, uh, month versus year to date, monthly versus year to date switch. Um, uh, so what we will do, we'll add another disconnected table. All right, this is just the simplest way how to do this uh, just in index, right? So I'll call this table my KPIs table and I'll simply list all of my KPIs um, that I will use in my in my switch um, statement in my in my filter. So I'll have a KPI column. Again, I'll add a KPI ID column uh, with, you know, just numbers one, two, three and so on. And let's start with the uh, revenue so revenue that's my first kpi then i have uh, what i have some costs so, so cost number two and the last one is the gross profit all right so let's gross profit 
you can actually use different names here. You can you can rename it, but um, I, I would not uh, recommend it for consistency reasons, right? Um, but otherwise, it can be a completely separate name because we'll just use the ID uh, for the calculation, right? So this is again a disconnected table. It's is completely disconnected table. I just put it somewhere. Maybe it should be here somewhere on the top or something. So make sure that your, you know, even your your schemas here are just logical and uh, logical and clean and in the right order and so on. Make sure that your fact table, you know, is like the biggest one. So it's nice. It's easy to understand. All right. So these are now my KPIs. So again, I'm here. I have a new table with the KPIs. Uh, I can use this here. All of my KPIs. Uh, I want to build a slicer. Again, I'll just use a drop down here. Um, I'll have switch to revenue. Switch to revenue. Let's put it here in the first place. Of course, also the order of the elements is is kind of important and. Well, we can fix the design later, but uh, what I want to do is again, you know, just build this. Uh, into the switch. All right, one one little thing here. So uh, now I have a different um, different order in my slicer, right? Um, I would actually prefer first to have the revenue, then the cost, and then at the end the, the gross profit, which is exactly the the order in my order in my table in my period calculate. Uh, sorry, my my KPIs KPIs table. Where are you here? Okay. So I see. So I'll just simply. Uh, sort my KPI by KPI ID. All right, it's simple. We go back and uh, all right, now I have the right order. Of course, again, I need to evaluate uh, which one is selected. So that's why I will add the same measure, a similar measure here. Uh, let's call this the uh, selected KPI. And I'll simply uh, take a look at the minimum value of my KPI ID. All right, exactly the same technique. So I'm just repeating uh, the same the same thing here. So selected KPI, uh, put it in a card. So it's now it's number one. You know, cost is number two. All right, this works. So now we can just use this uh, selected KPI and build it into my measure. So now let's go back. And now um, what I will do is I will add another measure, uh, which will not be revenue or not be cost and so on, but will be just a generic, generic value based on the selection of the KPI. Let's uh, add another measure. Let's call it, uh, how should we call it? The uh, selected KPI value. All right, this is now the, this will be now the true value. And I'll again use the switch uh, statement. I'll evaluate my uh, selected KPI. Select the KPI, which should be one or two or three. So if it's one, then we'll just return the sum of my um, revenue. Okay. So this will just simply switch between different, you know, columns in, in my fact table. So if it's number two, then we'll return the sum of my costs. And the last one is uh, some of the gross profit. This is the one. All right, one, one more for the switch. Enter. All right. This is now, now I have this measure in my sales in my sales table. So selected KPI value. Now what I what I will do here is now we'll go back to my revenue AC measure. Actually, no, the first one, revenue AC filtered. 
And now you see, now instead, now we'll just correct this. And instead of using revenue AC filtered, we'll just we'll just delete here the revenue. We'll just um, uh, let's just build another one. All right. So I'll just or uh, yeah, okay. Now let's let's try it like this. All right. So revenue filtered. That's the filter. Uh, this is the switch. Too many measures already. So AC filtered. And instead of using, you know, the revenue, we'll just take here one more, delete this. And instead of this, just put in the new one, which was called the selected KPI value. Selected KPI value here, enter. All right. It's working. It should be working. So you see, I haven't changed anything because, uh, no, sorry, uh, revenue AC and this is not the revenue AC. Sorry, revenue. All right, now we need to uh, also this one. We would need to. This is not revenue AC anymore. So we just need to rename everything back. So basically, you end up with a simple measure with one measure with one measure, which you can actually just call the AC actual or something because it will take into account your measures. All right. And now with this, you can simply build different types of, of reports. You don't need this anymore. You clean it up and uh, yeah, you can just simply take this, um, duplicate the page and like build 10 pages in your dashboard in like five minutes, literally. So for example, you can have a small one here, um, small table here or small chart like this. Then you have the time trends. You can add multiple, like you can do an analysis of all the different business units. Let's try to build a few pages just quickly, like just group, business unit group. You see, it just put all the business units here. Um, make it a little bit more clean. So for example, data labels, um, let's just switch this to thousands and uh, show units in the title. So I have now in K, everything in K and reduce the number of decimal places. Sometimes you even need to reduce the number of, you know, the density of the labels. So let's, uh, where do I have this, the density. All right, so this is kind of cleaner. And you see now you, now you can analyze like all the business units here on, you know, with simple two, with two simple visuals uh, where you can simply switch between gross profit, revenue or costs, or, you know, any measure you want you can switch to year to date, monthly with a very, very simple, simple DAX model, right? So once you do this, maybe fix the design a little bit. Uh, just make everything oh sorry opacity just zero so make this even more clean like this you see uh let's do it like this or you can add you know now you can just add complexity by adding different types of, of measures this already works now you click you click on one business unit that's the baby care here and they compare it to something else like to the variables or something completely uh, you know different just control click so this is already quite quite powerful and we've just you know had like uh, 50 minutes 50 minutes to to build all this um you know next you can do a duplicate this and uh yeah, they can build, uh, you can continue, you know, continue building. Let's just delete this one, or you can do more uh, of a structure, structure type of reports. Um, so instead of just having one dimension here, you can build a, you know, a hierarchy here. So let's go from business unit group to business unit. Some divisions are probably on top of that. Is this so? Yeah, so basically, let's collapse everything. So yeah, you see, you can just go from, you know, like, you know, a simple one, 
one visual here you can just drill down and and have the comparison to previous year and then you can of course add the the the, the budget which would make it even more interesting so i haven't finished the budget uh, the plan measure here um completely so but actually now i think if i pl filtered i would just need to yeah just to add a simple budget measure and then again refer here to my um selected kpi value right so let's just quickly see let's just see if i can really quickly do this does this work or not i'm not completely sure syntax something's wrong one it's too much here this looks better all right so so maybe this is already working or is it not the revenue the plan All right, maybe it's uh, it's probably not completely correct now, but uh, you see, you you get my point. So so you know now you have the the previous year here, you have the actuals, you have the plan, and you have the the variance in between already. You can drill down into many 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 details. Uh, yeah, you can shift uh, your columns around. Of course, th these are now the this is now also the benefit of of the Zebra BI visuals um but together with everything you know it's quite easy to just build reports like that um in a really an extremely short uh, short time period another really nice benefit of having the kpis uh you know like unpivoted like like this is uh for example and this will be my last my last page that I'll build. So instead of breaking down your, you know, monthly charts by, you know, business units, products and so on, uh, you can actually, let's remove the, the, this group here. And instead of doing this, now you can take the KPIs, your, your KPI table and just drop the uh, KPIs into, uh, into your visual. And instead of using here, so now I won't use it here, I'll just do this. So you see, instead of doing this, you can actually build, you can actually put all your KPIs in the same visual. So you get a small multiple of different KPIs, which is kind of, uh, which is really cool, which is something that you can't really do in Power BI otherwise. So you need to have your KPIs, you know, uh, together in, in, in one, a column like with the switch table or you can do the same by unpivoting your columns in power query which is uh, actually a better uh, you know more um, better for for production models for bigger models but uh, the point is uh, you can just simply use the kpi column here uh, to display all of your kpis uh, that are scaled so you understand all right the revenue here is like eight million or something and and you know while the gross profit is like half of that and you see the you know the uh the growth of of revenue is 8.2 percent and this is a little bit faster growth on the gross profit here right and everything is scaled in in one visual and you can just do it like monthly year to date and, and so on uh all right so this wraps up my presentation um um please if you have any kind of questions just uh type your questions in um i'll try to answer a few questions uh we have a, like a i think two or three minutes uh two or three minutes left to take your your questions while uh while you're doing this um please just type them into your questions box uh i actually don't jan can you take over um for the for the questions just uh, i don't see the question box for some reason um okay. so um uh, joseph uh, asked if you can share the pbx file uh, i did already um oh, yeah. i did already i sent it to your email jan so uh i shared the pbix file I shared the PBIX file, so it should be somewhere. Um, and the PBIX file has the DAX, all the DAX that I've used here. And, uh, you know, I hope also in the same order, more or less, but uh, with the comments. So hopefully this will help you. 
-hmm. So this is the last page here. And then more or less all the pages that I've built are already here in the result. There are some additional things here that you also see, like you can do like a calculation, revenue minus cost, gross profit, things like that. So this is all this is all shared already um, somewhere okay. on your on your uh, in your email inbox and the PBI uh, and the PowerPoint file as well. So, yeah. so this is the PowerPoint file. PowerPoint file has mm -hmm. uh, a few more uh, like resources. So now the Zebra BI custom visuals. If you like the visuals, that's actually what we what that that's our basic you know work of, or my basic work is actually the visualization. So if you like the custom visuals, please download the the free trial version here uh, from zebrabi.com/pbi. PBI. Our visuals are at the moment not on the app source. They're not on the app source, right? So if you like the visuals, would like to try this, uh, just download them here. Otherwise, the PBIX files and examples uh, will work for you as well. And uh, yeah, for other examples like that, so financial statements and so on, you can just use this link. We have other webinar recordings from before, so it's like 20 hours of recording material. So you can also explore a little bit this link. It has a lot of a lot of stuff. Cool, nice. Um, on Slack, uh, George said uh, thanks for the great demo and the ideas that it gave him. So that's uh, some very good feedback for you. Um, and Rishi says dynamic titles in Power BI will be awesome here too, as you can show the selected measure name in the title. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I you can. Uh, that's, uh, thanks, that. Rishi. I think that's actually the best new feature in April release. Uh, mm -hmm. The best new feature in April release. I actually have the, the the March release here, so I can't show you that. But if you go here, it also works in the Zebra BI visuals. Haven't tried it actually, but. Uh, the new, uh, so the title, um, so here instead of typing, so what is Rishi, Rishi is referring here is, uh, let's just call it Rishi's uh, custom title, completely dynamic. <laughs> the thing is that this uh, title here in the new version uh, in um, Power BI Desktop, April, uh, April um, yeah, April mm -hmm. re release, you can, um, you can put a DAX expression here instead of the fixed title, which is great because you can build any t any kind of DAX expression that returns a text. It can take uh, you you know you 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 can take a look at the filter context and everything what whatever you want. Just make sure that your DAX measure returns the text, and then you will see here there's a new button, and uh, yeah, you can just drop in your DAX measure into the title, and then this title will change based on you know all these parameters and so on. So yeah, mm -hmm. next time I do this uh, demo, I'll include this in my demo. Thanks, Rishi. Cool, okay. Um, and some other people have been uh, chiming in. Thank you for your time, this is fantastic, many thanks. So yeah. Indeed, Andre, very much thank you for doing this. Um, I enjoyed it. It's always a pleasure to to seeing uh, to seeing you present. So hopefully we'll see you again somewhere in the future. Hopefully, thank you very much for inviting me, and I wish everybody the great, uh, great, uh, the the great re rest of the virtual Power BI days with Jan and company. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Bye, Andre. Bye. Ciao.